boy. Here they come. Here they come. Birds. They must know it's Valentine's Day. Then why isn't the boy bird running for his life before it's too late? Haha, <laughs> 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 that's more like it. Good boy, Guinness. <laughs> why so cynical, son? Valentine's Day is a day for expressing appreciation for those you love. Okay, but if you love someone, you're supposed to show it every day. Oh, right? That's true. So then why have a special day just so you can buy the wrong present and mess it all up? Seems like a lot of unnecessary pressure if you ask me. Yeah. <sighs> You've got a point, Roy. I mean, look at you, Dad. You do lots of nice things for Mom. But every Valentine's Day at the last minute, you rush down to the grocery store for some dollar piece roses, and then she gives you that look. Yes, that look. That doghouse look. Ooh. I have to hand it to you, son. You know how to spot a conspiracy when you see it. In fact, you've heard of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Yeah. Well, I'm willing to bet it was organized by a group of disappointed women. So, is everyone excited about Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day? Has that crept around again? My, how time flies. Mm-hmm, about as fast as you're going to fly down to the market for those cheap roses after school today. Store-bought roses for my one true love. Oh, ye of little faith. And ye of no preparation. Now, here's somebody who's gotten into the spirit of the day. Did you write out all your Valentines last night, Catherine? No, we're going to do my class today. I'm going to give one to Jonah, to Hunter, to Keely, and to Hannah, and to Greasy, and to... You don't have to give us the whole starting lineup, sweetheart. We get it. But I'm not giving one to Bradley Hillendale. Oh, what's wrong with Bradley Hillendale? He's nasty. He wipes his nose with his arm. That doesn't seem a reason to... Sometimes he wipes his nose with my well, maybe he likes you. Lots of boys your age mistake poor personal hygiene for undying affection. Yes, this behavior later manifests itself in leaving their dirty underwear on the floor for their wives to pick up. Love is a bedroom with no hamper. <laughs> or if you're Angie, no date. Be quiet, Roy. You're right, Angie. I'm sorry. Sorry you're so unpopular. You can't get a date to the Valentine's Day dance. Ooh, for a moment I thought our Roy had been replaced by an alien Roy from a kinder, more polite planet. Okay, so I don't have a date to the Valentine's Day dance. Big deal. I guess I can always go with Glenn. Did he ask you? No, but he'll pretty much do whatever I tell him to. The thing is, I don't like Glenn that way. James, on the other hand, I like that way. That way keeps fathers awake at night, especially with a hound dog like James. But he hasn't asked me yet. What makes you think he will? James could go out with any girl in school. My guess is you're second on that list. Second? Second to last, but only if Veronica Tindall forgets to pluck her more hair. You're just jealous because you probably won't get any Valentines today. So what if I don't? I think Valentine's Day is strictly a waste of time. Roy, you don't mean that. Yes, I do, and Dad agrees with me. Tell her, Dad. You don't really believe that I think Valentine's Day is a waste of time. I know what I heard. You heard it from our boy. He's an adolescent. He can't be trusted until he reaches 23. I promise you, this year, Valentine's Day will be different, special. Oh, really? So you're buying roses from the guy at the highway exit this time? I already checked. He's selling oranges this week. <laughs> I'm serious, honey. This year, we'll have the Valentine's Day to end all Valentine's Days. A sign of the apocalypse. How romantic. I'm pulling out all the stops. We'll put on our finest clothes, dine at a restaurant where they don't have a children's menu, and the food's too small for the plate. Will there be a beautiful present waiting for me at the Ritz? Of course. 
Like the old song said, ain't no mountain high enough to keep me from getting you the perfect gift. For your sake, I hope that mountain's shorter than our closet shelves. Now, although their stock and trade is disseminating information, media outlets, like all businesses, must keep an eye towards increasing revenue. Towards this goal, companies may capitalize on special events or holidays to generate income. For example, today, the newspaper has promoted a special section where people buy classified space to wish someone a happy Valentine's Day. As a consumer, I find that both costly and impersonal. Really, Mr. Kurtz? Yes. I classify that as cold and indirect. I'd much rather give a card directly to Angie. <laughs> I mean, directly to my valentine. I've got one hour to power shop for this present. Can't blow it this time, Arthur. Dr. Bindleby! There you are! We're discussing across-the-board departmental budget cuts, and I need your input. Won't take but a moment or two. Well, can we try to keep it to a moment? Angie! Oh, hey, Glenn, what's up? Happy Valentine's Day. That's so sweet. You shouldn't have. Uh, they were a dollar apiece down at the store. Yeah, I know all about that. <laughs> you know, uh, Angie, I, I was thinking about going to the dance tonight. You know, Glenn, you should. It'll be fun for you. Look, I gotta bounce. See you later, okay? Um, thank you so much for the rose. Uh, okay. Hi, James. Hey, Angie. Come here, cutie. Happy Valentine's Day. Wanna go to the dance? Sure, John. I... Sure? No. Yes! No, 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 wait. You said sure. That's not what it meant. No, no, no. It's a date. No, I didn't mean to say sure. Not doing. Ah, not listening. Not listening. Can't hear you. I said sure. Andy Bindleby is my date to the dance. <laughs> of the litter feels like. How about this? Yes, yes. My Gwendolyn would definitely be impressed by something like this. Very good, Mr. Andre. Something like this, but not this. Show me something more expensive and sparkly. My Gwendolyn loves expensive and sparkly. Excuse me, could you help me? I'm a little strapped for time. What would you like to see, sir? A bracelet. Expensive and sparkly? Not so expensive, and as sparkly as I can get on a teacher's salary. There you are, gentlemen. Exquisite double-cut diamonds. And with just the right number of zeros attached, my Gwendolyn will be thrilled. $69.95, genuine zircon. Yep, that ought to keep the doghouse look at bay. You've got that right, but... I'll wrap these up while you fill out your gift cards. Oh, I can't wait to see the look on my Gwendolyn's face when she sees that little stunner. Sounds like your Gwendolyn is a very lucky lady. You've got that right. <laughs> Why, I shudder to think what my Gwendolyn would be without me. Maybe she could be her own Gwendolyn for a while. Finish with those cards? Hmm. Mm. Uh, there you go. Enjoy! Thank you, miss. And a happy Valentine's Day to you and your Gwendolyn. Same to you and your, uh... My wife. This is for my wife. <clears throat> Arthur Bindlebeep, I know you're standing there grinning like a Cheshire cat. You want to tell me? Oh. Could you please tell me where to find the humor section? Uh, uh, three, three aisles back on your left. Thank you. Hello, dear. You told that man to stand there, didn't you? Just keeping you on your feet so I can sweep you off them later. Oh, really? That's right. In fact, I'm just on my way to the store for your usual bargain bouquet. Then I'll stop off at the drugstore for cards and candy for the kids before I pick up Catherine from school. Oh, it's getting mighty late. If you don't hurry, all those roses are going to be picked over. They may not even have any left. Hey, if that's the case, I'll improvise. The supermarket, being super by nature, contains a treasure trove of unique gift items to please even the most discriminating valentine. Such as? Oh, I don't know. How about a corkscrew or a pocket horoscope guy? I'll even throw in some beef jerky just to show you how much I care. You'd go that extra mile for me? Honey, I'd go two miles. That should be a decent head start for a clean getaway. Don't bet on it.
My littlest Valentine. Did you have a fun day today? Not really. Will some chewy chocolate and caramel therapy make it better? Not really. Uh-oh, this must be serious. Care to tell me about it? We made our Valentine's in class today. Here's yours. Thank you, honey. You were very excited about making Valentine's this morning. What happened? Well, we made them, and then our teacher made us give them out. Okay. To everybody in the class. Oh, everybody, including Bradley Hillendale. Our teacher said it wouldn't be nice to leave anybody out. Your teacher is right. So, did Bradley Hillendale give you a valentine, too? Yes, after he wiped his nose with it. But I got him back. Got him back? How'd you do that? Before I gave him his card, I spat on him. I see. Don't worry, Daddy. I only spit on Bradley's card. I got it good, too. Listen, Catherine, as you walk through life, you'll come across a lot of people that you might not care for. Like Bradley Hill and them? I'm not naming names. My point is, in spite of your personal feelings towards a person, there's a thing we call tolerance. Do you know what tolerance is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Well. Tolerance means that we sometimes put aside our negative feelings in order to just get along, to be kind and gracious, and give somebody a valentine without spitting on it. Do you understand? I think so. Daddy, remember that man who cut you off in traffic yesterday? Yeah. The one who gave you that funny grown-up wave when you hunked at him? Yeah. Would you give him a valentine without spitting on it? <laughs> Okay? I'm fine. I see you have a valentine in your hand. Who's it from, son? Jennifer Yang. Is she nice? I don't know. Have I met her? I don't know. Do you like her? I don't know. Well, is she the reason why your vocabulary has been reduced to three syllables? I don't know. My son, my son. There's hope for that boy yet. Angie, I cannot believe you agreed to go to the dance with John Kurtz. I didn't mean to say yes to him. It just happened. You know how Kurtz is. Mm-hmm. That boy will sneak up on you like a bad case of the sniffles. This is all James' fault. Walking past you to put the moves on Trudy Sims. With her tired self. He's got some nerve. How? Huh? Forget about James. What am I going to do about Kurtz? The way I see it, you only have one option. Lie to him. Lie to him? I don't want to lie to him. Do I? Not if I'm the him in question, you don't. Hi, Dr. Bindleby. Bye, Dr. Bindleby. Good luck, Angie. Are these for me? Thank you, Daddy. You're the best. Here, I got this for you. Thanks. But don't think that sweet talk is going to make me forget that you're currently considering lying to who knows who about who knows what. There's only one sucker in this room. Let's have it. It's nothing. John Kurtz invited me to go to the dance with him. I had a feeling that might happen. Didn't think he had it in him, though. Wait, you knew this would happen? Well, he may have tipped his hand a little in class today. And you didn't stop him? Hold on. Who am I, the dating police? Why not? You control everything else about my life. Is that right? I'm controlling. Me, controlling. Just for that, young lady, you can consider yourself... Grounded? Please say I'm grounded. If effective right now. You want to be grounded? You said yes to Kurtz, didn't you? It was an accident. Hey, <laughs> accidents happen. I'm just glad you're choosing not to lie to the boy. It shows character. Daddy? Yes? When Kurtz gets here, can you please tell him I'm not home? Please, Daddy? Pretty please? Oh. Well, Guinness, looks like two of the Bindlebeep women have had less than stellar Valentine's Days. But I've still got one Bindlebeep woman to make happy. And here she is now. Welcome home, Valentine. 
let's get this over with. Where are my roses? Well, maybe I had them delicately folded and placed inside this beautifully wrapped box. Ooh, <laughs> this is promising. You don't know the half of it. You're going to be very surprised by what's in this box. Now, go on upstairs and get ready for our big night of romance. I'm going, lover man. I'm going. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> Easy, Guinness. I promise you this is going to be good. <clears throat> Good evening, Dr. Bindleby. Good evening, Mr. Kurtz. I'll be escorting Angie to the school soiree this evening. By chance, is she ready to go? I'm sorry, Mr. Kurtz. Angie isn't in at the moment. <laughs> but if you go around to the side of the house, I'm sure you'll run into each other. Yeah. Oh, and here's a 20. Take Angie out for a bite afterwards. Someplace high profile where you can see and be seen. Gee, thanks, Dr. Bindleby. No, thank you, Mr. Kurtz. I was going to make up for all those other Valentine's days. Oh, you're doing a bang-up job so far. But there's one more thing that might put you over the top. I see. And what do I get in return for over the top? A little more over the top. I was going to make you wait until after dinner for this, but there is no arguing with over the top. Such elegant wrapping. Never mind the paper. Open it. Oh, wait. I almost forgot. I got you a little something, too. A, B. I hope those were my initials and not the gamut of my intelligence. <laughs> I'm bowled over! My ten pin just got knocked down, too. This must have cost you a fortune. A lot of zeros. And the swanky dinner? Oh, you've really outdone yourself. Yes, I'm done all right. Finished, in fact. And all I got you was a cheap money clip. Cheap is a relative term. Arthur, I want you to return it to the store. Say again? This is much too extravagant for me. We're not flashy people. Well, there is that, dear. Still, it would be kind of nice to have one piece of flashy jewelry for special occasions. My funeral suddenly comes to mind. On the other hand, this will surely cut into our family budget. We have to think of the children after all, and the dog kibble isn't cheap. Then again, a piece like this could be considered an investment. Or an invitation to robbery. What was I thinking placing you in peril like that? Shame on me. Wait a minute. Are you trying to talk me out of my present? Me? No. No. Well, maybe. Okay, yes. I have a confession to make. I'm listening. Norma, I didn't spend that much on your present. I bought you a simple, inexpensive bracelet. The clerk at the store must have mixed up the packages. This necklace, it, it isn't yours. Arthur, only you! You're not upset? Please, you ought to know me better than that. You don't need to spend that kind of money just to prove how much you love me. You show it every day, though you do get extra points for the effort. So what kind of bracelet was it? Oh, it was made of genuine... Zircon! Got the Zircon! Gwendolyn, wait! I'm never speaking to you again! <laughs> Well, I guess she's her own Gwendolyn now. How's that? Nothing. What do you say we skip the tiny food, grab some burgers, and plan a little trip over the top? Mm, I like that idea. After we spend some time with our other little Valentines. You know, Roy, tomorrow it will no longer be Valentine's Day. At that time, all food items are expected to go back into your mouth. Leave the boy alone, Arthur. Don't you remember your first real Valentine? How can I? There were so many. Oh, please. How's your date, dear? I'm never speaking to you again for as long as I live.
I'm guessing there were no sparks between Angie and John Kurtz. No, but I'm sensing some friction between her and her father. I know what I think. When I grow up, I'm only going to spend Valentine's Day with the people I love, like tonight. <laughs> Time to go home, Kurtz. Not until I get my goodnight kiss. Oh, girls. <laughs> Thank you. 